Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 845. And my opponent started off with uh, e4 and I chose to play the uh, Sicilian defense with c5. So we get a couple of normal moves here, knight f3, uh, d6, d4 going for the open Sicilian, and I took. And he played the uh, second choice here, queen takes d4. This is known as the checkover variation, and I've seen it before. It looks uh, kind of strange at first. But uh, actually, it's playable. Uh, Magnus Carlsen has even played this a time or two. Um, so you can play knight c6 immediately, and you get into this tactical line where the uh, bishop pins the knight. Um, that seems to be okay for black as well, but I think uh, maybe the simplest way to play is with uh, a6. So you get knight c6 and with tempo, and, uh, and black should be fine here. Uh, just to show, oh yeah, my, so my opponent's next move here was uh, e5, and we're just out of the opening book here, but just to show kind of a normal continuation on how white can uh, make a playable position out of this, um, even with some edge. You go for c4 here, and you get a um, Roxy bind setup. So knight c6, the queen has to move. It can go to, you know, d2 or e3. It is blocking this bishop. Uh, black can go for a uh, dragon setup. So we have something like a Maroxy bind against the dragon where the queen was developed early and, and um, it uh, it seems like there's like a, a wasted move there with the queen coming out and going back. And But the, um, the fact that the queen is in front of the bishop is not usually a problem. Uh, white is going to develop with uh, pawn to b3 and bishop to b2 anyway to counter to counter Black's bishop on the long diagonal. And so uh, White still has an edge in this position due to his uh, central control. So, you know, a bit of a funny looking opening line if you're not familiar with it, but it's it's quite playable for, uh, for White uh, in spite of this uh, evaluation. Well, this is just the opening book with a sample of 16 games. It shows, uh, shows uh, Black winning. Uh, most of the time, 11 to 4, but uh, it's a small sample. If you look at this with the chess engine, the chess engine prefers white. So I think it's it's playable. But uh, the move my opponent played, e5, well, I can't say it's not playable, but definitely yeah, black has an advantage after this. Um, there's different ways to get an advantage. I went with uh, knight c6. That, that's the best move here, kick the bishop and uh, threaten to take the pawn. And then queen d2. I can actually just take the pawn now, and that's what the chess engine would do. That's its first choice, take the pawn, and then uh, take back with the king here after the trade of uh, queens so that uh, not only are you staying better developed here with your knight, uh, you're also holding on to that pawn. So you get to keep your extra pawn, and um, so black is a pawn up in the end game. But you have a, a long way to go to uh, win the game. And uh, I decided to keep the queens on with the move uh, e6. And this also leads to a position, while well, the material is equal, but black has an advantage because of uh, better development. So both lines lead to an advantage. So I can't say anything has gone wrong. And then uh, white doesn't do anything to help his case <laughs> the next few moves. He goes uh, a3. A3 is apparently preparing the move queen to c3 and stopping me from uh, pinning pinning and winning the queen in advance. But it's very peculiar play by white and cannot, cannot be good. So I just continue with normal development. Let white uh, continue with queen c3 and I castle. Already here, um, e5 is, is looking to be a very strong move. I eventually play e5 in the game, uh, but the chess engine is uh, crying out for e5 early on. I mean, if we just put that on the board for a second, you can see that uh, white has got uh, the center. I mean, black. Black has got the center. Black has got development. Black and castle. It's just pretty much every every advantage you can think of is is in black's favor at this point. So definitely a good way to play. Uh, there's nothing wrong with castling too. This keeps an edge for black, but. Maybe e5 was more accurate. Um, so uh, white finally develops another piece with bishop to d3. And then uh, right here, there's actually a long forcing sequence that uh, that wins material for black. So bishop d3 is actually a, a mistake. So if you want to see if you can spot the idea, how can how can black win material here? Yeah, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. It's an interesting test 
of your ability to uh, calculate. You might be able to find it, given the, the hint that I've given you that there's a winning continuation here. Okay, anyway, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. So last chance to pause the video. It starts with this move e5, which I talked about before. Now e5 after bishop d3 is coming with a much bigger threat. It's immediately threatening this uh, fork. So bishop to g5 um, is the chess engine's suggested way of dealing with that uh, fork. The idea being after I push the pawn, white can uh, take take the knight and then take back the pawn. But uh, you go ahead and do that anyway. You push the pawn, uh, white takes the knight with the threat on the queen. So um, you've got to take back. Taking with the queen is most accurate. And then, uh, and then white gets the pawn, and it, it seems like uh, everything is fine. So you had to calculate through this and notice that there is what, one move that uh, black has at the end of that forced sequence, which is rook to e8. And now <laughs> everything seemed fine up until you notice this uh, rook e8 move, and there's actually no way to uh, save the bishop. Um, knight c3 saves it for a moment, but f5 will win it. So it's pinned and it's unprotected and there's no way he can both uh, unpin, there's no way white can both uh, unpin and protect the uh, the bishop. So a piece is going to be lost there. So so bishop d3 allows that tactic, the pawn push, the exchanges, and then finally the, uh, the uh, pin along the open e-file. So it all comes down to uh, white's slow development and failure to uh, castle all part of the same picture. So anyway, that would have been uh, a quick a quick finish to this game and interesting. I didn't spot that. Um, I just kept developing with bishop d7, which is also, you know, keeping an edge. Let's see. Oh, white should go bishop to g5 now. And uh, after that, you know, there's an edge for black, but it's not overwhelming. After the move uh, that white played, b4, once again, ignoring all principles of development, <laughs> Uh, at this point, there's no way for white to avoid the loss of material. So um, e, e5 e is still a good idea here, um, as before. But uh, this move I played, rook c8, this is also good, setting up a discovered attack on the queen. And now just to show that how, how white loses material in all cases, um, the best move here is actually to develop the knight, knight b to d2. And you get um, you get a pawn here because you can take on b4 with a tempo on the queen and the knight is protected by the bishop. So the queen has to move away. And then this continues. Knight takes d3. C takes d3. And uh, you've snagged a pawn here. And uh, and white's position is still a mess as well. So that's the uh, that's the best that white can do. So that's what I meant when I said uh, white white loses material in all cases. Um, but white played a move that was worse. He played bishop to b2. And now, um, you know, I started to have ideas, um, particularly, you know, the idea of bishop to uh, e5 was looking very attractive. It's supported by the knight there, and, um, and it puts pressure on this uh, queen and bishop battery. So uh, you'll get a backfire tactic against that bishop. And, uh, yeah, this is all pretty forcing at this point. I played uh, e5 finally uh, taking advantage of this uh, threat to come here and fork those two pieces. Uh, white played g5, uh, knight to g5, but uh, well this has accomplished my objective. Um, I couldn't uh, I couldn't make use of the square e5 as long as that uh, knight was protecting it, but my threat of pushing this pawn forward has chased the knight away. So um, I push forward once more and then that allows me to uh, clear that square so I can put the bishop there hitting the queen. Now the queen has to move out of the way. Uh, it wants to stay in touch with the bishop. And, um, and now I want to play um, bishop to uh, e6 to chase the queen away from defense of that bishop and just pick up a piece. But before I can do that, I once again have to uh, get rid of this knight. So, uh, so I decided to take on e4 so that when he takes back, I have another move against the queen. So all this has gone according to plan. And now we played uh, c4. 
And uh, the simplest continuation here is actually just to uh, take that pawn because after the queen takes, uh, you can take the bishop. And so not only do you get your piece back, but uh, you've also got a great position here. There's still uh, tactics, discovered attacks on the queen. And there's also uh, the rook is under pressure there as well. So anyway, that, that's, uh, that's another way to uh, win material, and that's the best line according to the chess engine. But I think the way I played it was uh, good too. It's, uh, I took here first, which pulled the queen back, and then I took on c4. And uh, this keeps, <laughs> keeps white from castling, and this becomes uh, important later in the game. Uh, let's see, he finally develops his last piece here now, knight bd2, hitting my bishop. I drop back. It's funny, I, I dropped back here, he kicked it, and I went to d3, and I was wondering if I had just kind of wasted the tempo there, but actually the chess engine gives bishop to b5 as the best move here. I guess because it weakens the, uh, the, uh, the b4 square when I play this way. It also gave a4 as the best response by white, and then uh, bishop to d3, staying on this diagonal, is uh, once again uh, given as the best move, so it's interesting. Um, let's see, he played uh, knight to c5 here. Yeah, sorry, wrong knight. Knight to c5. So, you know, that knight was uh, in danger of being pinned. And uh, so he's moving his knight away with a threat. But uh, my threats come, come more quickly in this position. And uh, basically there's no way out. Let's see, he goes king d1, he can't run in the other direction, and any interposing leads to loss of material. I go bishop e2 check. Uh, he didn't want to run, walk back into a discovered check here, so he kept running this way, king to c1. Now I went to b6, kicking his knight. And after he takes on a6, which is what he played in the game, um, he uh, loses, there's a forced checkmate in that sequence. So um, the best move here is rook a3, but of course that gives up a whole piece here, so that cannot be uh, all that great. Um, but anyway, yeah, he played them more. Uh, well, he played to save his material. He played knight takes e6, and that allows the pretty finish here. And um, so it's a forced mate in six, and I, I found one of the mates, but there is a uh, faster one here. So knight takes b4 check. That's a good way to start. Um, the knight here can't be taken because he's got to deal with the check, and it's also covering these key squares. And when I played this, I didn't see the checkmate. I just noticed that uh, it wins the knight here. But after his king went to b1, I started looking for checkmating ideas. And um, if you want to, uh, see if you can find the fastest checkmate here. Okay, uh, pause the video if you want time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away now. The very fastest uh, checkmate is queen to um, d3 check. Because if you look at this, the uh, king has nowhere to go. The rook is guarding the escape square here, and the knight is guarding the escape square here. So only the only move here is to interpose with the queen. And after the queen interposes, you can just take it once again because of the rook. So that would have been a nice mate in two. Uh, this is also a forced mate. I didn't quite see it all the way through, but I thought it, it must be good. Let's see, he went queen c2. <laughs> yeah, it forced a win of the queen, so I suppose I was thinking that was good enough. I take here, but uh, wherever the king goes, he ends up in a checkmate. So he went to b2, I went queen d4 check, and he went to a3. And you saw how that ended in a checkmate. If he goes to uh, c1, there's a very pretty checkmate with the knight. Uh, the rook defending the bishop, the queen guarding the escape square, and the knight delivering the check, and the bishop covering those escape squares. So all four pieces are in use. I guess I'm not using that rook, but the uh, the minor pieces there, the uh, the bishop and the knight are playing the starring roles. So very pretty mate in that direction. King to a3 also leads to a checkmate after a queen c3 check. He has to interpose, and then I take it with mate. So a nice little uh, workout of your uh, checkmate patterns, and I um, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. See you later. Bye.